on the line now, we have actor, writer and comedian Susanna Gerritsey. Susanna, thanks for joining us on the show. Oh, I'm delighted to be on, Barry. Thank you for having me. Susanna, you've got uh, your award-winning show is coming up uh, in the Alley Theatre in my hometown in Strabane uh, ah! later, later next month. So, so t tell me, what, what can people expect? Well, it's a comedy, and uh, it's actually an award-winning comedy, and it's about a, a, a person, a Zoe, Zoe Brown, who has a burning ambition to be an actress. But in reality, she works backstage uh, on a very low-budget production of A Christmas Carol. And she's first in, doing everybody's laundry, sweeping the floor, and last out, neat hours of the night, and gets very little money for what she does. But she watches all the other actors, hoping that someday she'll be where they are. And the play starts the day that uh, Zoe um, lands an agent, uh, Betty. Now, Betty's quite elderly, and she does have contacts, but because Betty's so elderly, her contacts are dead, and she sends poor old Zoe off on all these most inappropriate auditions, ranging from river dance to Spider-Man to actually being shot out of a cannon for a touring circus. So poor old Zoe is getting further and further from her dream, but ironically, she's actually getting closer to herself. And just as she's about to give up, her dream, uh, she falls asleep where she works backstage at a production of A Christmas Carol, and she's visited by three ghosts, the ghosts of her past, her present, and her future. Now, I, I don't want to reveal all of it, uh, but they give her wisdom, and it's really, it's a story about being authentic, the importance of being true to oneself, and at the core of the piece is the Oscar quote Wilde, uh, uh, quote, Oscar by Oscar Wilde which is be yourself, everyone else is taken. And you wrote this yourself, Susanna? I did, I did. I, it started with the character, uh, Barry. I started with a character called Zoe, and it just kind of happened by accident, really. There were two things going on. Um, I was, I really wanted to develop my own work. I really had, my dream was to develop my own show. But I'm dyslexic, and I thought, well, Ah, uh, I'll never be able for it. I wouldn't be smart enough. And then what happened to me was, uh, one day, I was in a, a library in New York City, and I just happened to be leaning a little too heavily on a bookshelf when a book fell down, a hardcover book, and hit me right in the nose. And Jesus, it was so sore. But I, I went to actually kick the book, and I missed. <clears throat> and I kicked the side of the bookshelf instead and actually broke my little toe. So at this point, I'm on the floor between my nose and my foot, rolling around, muttering curses at this book. And finally, I opened it, and I started to leave through it, and I actually began to cry. And I was crying not because of the pain, but because the book gave me tremendous hope. It was a book by a guy called Jacques Lecoq, and it was called The Moving Body. And he was using terminology I'd never heard before, like the actor-creator. So he was proposing a way of developing work that wasn't based on sitting down in front of your computer or sitting there with your pen and paper, but it was about getting up on your feet and doing and exploring. And my whole thing in life was very, I was very into sports. I was loving your interview, by the way, with the boxer. Uh, I loved <laughs> John Dudding, yeah, he's trying yeah. to start the acting as well. Yeah, I loved it. I, and I think sports and acting are actually very similar. I think they're, they're, they're cousins. And one of the people that inspired me, oddly enough, was Barry McQuiggan. Right. He had a, yeah, he had a great saying. Um, he said, it's not the dog in the fight. It's the fight in the dog. Yeah. That's a and saying. That's a saying that's been that. used. All oh, you hear many people using that saying, don't you? It's been reused oh. in films. And I never have forgotten that, because it. Uh, well, you know, as an actor, you get a lot of. Well, you get a lot of knocks, and you get a lot of rejection, and um, and it, I oh, that quote from him is one of the things I always come back to. So always. does so so does this. Does this ride in editions, Zoe editions? Does does this kind of mirror your own life then? <laughs> well, I, Barry, I, uh, well, people ask me that now, Barry, but I've never been shot out of a cannon for a touring circus. Now, honestly, <laughs> um, well, Zoe would be much more comic than me, you know. Uh, but I, I suppose where 
the way myself meet is she's very resilient and um the where people like it's extraordinary that in america they took to her you know because out of 11 countries with 77 shows this was the show that the audience voted for this was their favorite and in ireland when i went around ireland and i'm coming back from the north i played at the playhouse actually and it went very well there uh, um it was lovely and the audience were it took to it. it was fantastic but what um what's where i think what it's about is that it's not that zoe gets knocked down time and time again but it's the fact that she keeps getting back up time and time again and i think that's what's you know uh endearing the audience to her and i don't know if i have that that level of resilience but i i went out to america at 17 and um to train there and i was training with 450 people and there's only one person left still in acting and barry you're talking to her <laughs> so it's a, you managed to pay the career and it's you mentioned there 77 shows in 11 countries you've been all over the world a, a great reception as well i'm reading uh, it was terrific. Well, it was at the world's largest solo theatre festival, is where it won the award, which is in Theatre Row on 42nd Street. It's a festival called the United Solo. And there were 11 countries, actually. Um, and there were 77 shows, solo shows from 11 countries. But Barry, oh my God, when I got into that festival, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I had to go and do a meditation course. Because I just thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? And, you know, do you get nervous I, all the time, or is it was it just for this show? I suppose it was. Um, do you know what it was? It was because I'd never written anything before. So, like now, I was responsible for the writing, and I remember thinking to myself, well, I've been involved, like, because I've lived in New York for quite a long time, and I worked quite a bit with a company called La Mama and in the development of a new work and there was lots of playwrights you know because when you first when they first write a play it's a bit ropey you know it's always ropey and you got to get actors in there to figure it out and what's working and what's not and uh like i was doing that for a lot of other playwrights so i thought to myself well why can't i do this for myself it was really so much about trying to find the confidence in myself as a writer and find my voice that's where that was the real struggle for me actually not not even dyslexia because uh, i think our inner inner conflicts can be greater than our external ones do you know that way um but it's it's been an extraordinary uh extraordinary journey and you've mentioned your dyslexia a few times it's never ever held you back has it oddly enough um it's been a remarkable gift in a way um because I had to, 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 I think you develop a lot of self-awareness without realizing it. Because you're in a classroom, say when you're a kid, and you're in a classroom, and the others are working away, and the teacher's telling them how to go about something. And part of you knows you can't go about it that way. There's an, you know, so you have to find a greater level of, of awareness of yourself. Like, how do I work? How does my mind work? Yeah. And that that um that's a great thing to to have in life, you know, uh self awareness, really. Um but uh and I I think dyslexic people are very creative. Uh -huh. I, the amount of them I've come across. Well it's very seems, entrepreneurial as well. It seems that you're 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 a good example anyway of people being creative. Um <laughs> Strabane, next month, just tell us what dates and how people get yeah. to see so it's playing on friday the 24th of april uh, at uh, the alley in straban and that's at 8 p.m and that's a captioned performance it's the first time the show has been captioned for the hard of hearing so i'm really excited about that and then the night after which is saturday the 25th of april it plays at the courtyard theater in newtown abbey and that's at 8 p.m and then i'm back in the republic at the Moat Theatre in Nace on Saturday, the 9th of May. And then the show, Barry, the show has been invited back to New York to feature in the Encore Group of Outstanding Award Winners at the United Solo Festival. So I go back to New York uh, for, the, for that honour. So I, um, I'm delighted to be coming, uh, coming back to Northern Ireland. The show sold out at the Marketplace Armagh and played to a standing ovation at the Playhouse. 
So I'm thrilled to be coming back. Okay, Susanna, thanks for joining us on the show today, and I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to seeing you next month. Oh, listen, Barry, thanks a million for having me. All the best for the show. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, 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 bye.